There we go. So a uh, few things. So we're going to quickly look at the GSC resource that have been updated, the one that have been released, and the new things. And uh, uh, we try to be quick to leave as much time as possible to Raymond because we uh, we're thinking that we should change a bit the DSC community calls, spend less time into updating you about what's going on. If you have questions, we're pretty much always on the Slack channel anyway, so you can just join us there, send us a message if we're not there. But uh, usually we cover pretty much all time zones anyway. And um, and then we have Raymond who's gonna uh, do a presentation about test DSC parameter state. So he's going to explain all about it. So I'm not going to spend much time. But the idea is keeping the first 10, 15 minutes for um, quick updates about the DLT community and what's going on and if you, anyone has questions. And then for the rest, uh, we have a session which talks about uh, DSC related stuff. So this is open. If anyone wants to uh, do a session in the future, let us know. Uh, maybe, uh, actually, maybe we will ask some people. So next time it will be uh, Bartek. So Bartek is online right now. He's going to talk about DSC uh, classes uh, in May, but uh, after May, so I can't remember exactly which one is going to be after, probably uh, not June, but maybe July, we will have a session. So maybe someone else can volunteer and do a presentation, just like Bill, for instance, with a whatever DSC and prepare that would be good but uh, I'm not I'm not throwing you under the bus just open suggestions and uh, if you have any questions just raise your hand let us know uh, drop in the chat or and, and we'll try to um, go through this so very quickly if you want to see how many um, how many DSC resources module we've transferred to the new uh, release pipeline then we have a dashboard, or we have a, a project board that we use, uh, just trying to make sure we know roughly where we're at. So at the moment, if it's up to date, it's usually we we update it every now and then. But it's about 21 repositories done. At least I think that was today. Uh, 21 done, and then there's still 30 ones to do. Some of them probably going to be deprecated, and some of them might be in progress, even if they're not done up in progress. But that gives you an idea if you want to see how far we get. And if there's some that you really need and you want to be released or you want to add new PRs, let us know if they're not done already. And uh, what has been converted since last call? So it's been pretty busy. Office Online Server DSC, it's been, it's been done. X DHCP Server, uh, X Hyper-V, X DNS Server, Certificate DSC, and Windows Update. All of those have been converted. And uh, in progress at the moment, Storage DSC. I believe is it you, uh, Daniel, doing this storage DSC? Yeah, yeah, that's that's me. Yep. All right. Just a few issues to work out. Okay. Yeah, usually there's a, and, and I think um, I think Johan can confirm there's a, usually some work that needs to be done, which is not directly related to the um, to the resource itself. It's the test that needs to be updated, and it's not just because of the change of the pipeline. It's also because um, it's good to make the test a bit more solid. And in this case, yeah, there's some some odd stuff to do with the disk uh, sim subsystem that differs in Azure DevOps agents to to the old um, AppVeyor stuff. So we've got to work through that. And plus, we're often the other thing we're tending to do is we used to run the the tests only on Windows 2016, and now we're actually extending and running them on 2019 as well. So that often that highlights differences in the in the behaviors, which is great, but you know, it's just stuff we've got to fix as we go along. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few things to do, like because changing from AppVia to like the AppVia image to the Azure DevOps image, it's uh, sometimes uh, out of, yeah, things changes on that takes some time. But um, there's also like two, one or two, we discussed a bit last time with the DISM feature that we're deprecating on X system security, which has been, uh, the resource have been moved. If I remember, Johan, can you confirm on that? Uh, yeah, this this feature has uh, just been deprecated, not moved. Uh, but uh, X system security has been it has been moved to both a uh, computer management DSC and file system DSC. That which is a new module. Yeah, yeah. So please use uh, those instead. So, but the X system feature was uh, deprecated because. Uh, we talked uh, on Twitter and Slack and asked if there were any scenarios that was using it, and 
we didn't get any response from the community, so we just deprecated it with the. And we actually, I added a note to, to the readme, so if anyone here f f sees a scenario that they contact us on Slack, so we can, in that case, we have to reopen it and convert it and etc. Yeah. Yeah. So the the old one is still being published, the old DSC resource, and the code is still in GitHub. So if if it needs to be worked on because we found a scenario, then we can still pick it up. But it's good for people to know that we're not planning on releasing new versions. No. So the next in the list, so the one not yet converted, but active, so GA DSC, and I believe this one is uh, the one uh, Raymond uh, will talk about today anyway. Uh, security policy DSC, storage DSC, DFS DSC, DSC resource analysis. I can't remember which one that one is. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know that one. We'll get to that maybe another call. Uh, X uh, XBit Locker, File Content DSC, iSCSI DSC, and FSRM DSC. And then we suggest that unless uh, you have a strong case against duplicating extra book of P, X WordPress, XPHP, and X Azure Stack, we don't see really a lot of usage on those, and we don't really see the point. If you do, and if you have a good use case, please let us know, either in this chat or maybe maybe just later, or if you have a question. And finally, these, and I'm not going to go through those, but these are the one that have been released uh, since the last call. There might have been more than one release, but you can see the latest release of those ones. And uh, since last call, these are the ones that have been actively um, worked on and released. With news, with those news, do you have any questions? The next call is going to be, again, May 20th, uh, same time. Um, and it will be Bartek presenting on uh, DSC class, uh, class-based resource uh, and working from the trenches and probably tell us all about uh, the problems he found. And I'm really looking forward to that one. But today, let's give Raymond, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and then we'll pick them up. But let's give Raymond uh, as much time as we can for his presentation. So let me stop sharing. And Raymond can request control. Uh... I'm sharing my screen now. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, just a couple of words. My, my name is Raymond. I'm with Microsoft since uh, a little bit more than 18 years and uh, always was interested in automating things. So DSC is um, yeah the, the stuff that keeps me busy most of the time nowadays. And uh, for one project, I needed urgently the JRDSC module that, oh, Gail, do you know how, who initially created that module? I think it was the PowerShell team, and then it was adopted by... Yeah, it was Microsoft doing it initially, and then it changed. And then I think uh, Chris Gardner rewrote it. Yeah, Chris it. Gardner, exactly. Yeah, Chris Gardner. And um, unfortunately, things did not work that smoothly than expected, and uh, I needed to rewrite lots of the code. And if we have a look at the at um, the first class here. It's Make the, it bigger, please. Yes, of course, the JR role capability. So we don't need to dig into details what JR is about. Um, what this role capability DSC resource does, it creates a PSD1 file that defines writes, visible commandlets, so everything that um, can be configured in a JR or just a PowerShell endpoint. And unfortunately, the, the configuration of a role capability file is quite complex. It is a, a nested hash table um, structure, which is not supported by DSC. So in DSC, we can only have hash tables that can store basic data types like integers, strings, and bools, but nothing more complex. And um, so what, well, what, what is it? It's not completely true. You've got embedded instances, right? Yeah, the, uh, but, but but it's very limited, isn't it? There's yeah. some challenges, and Bartek can tell you about this. <laughs> okay, so Chris had the idea to um, use just string arrays to define whatever is needed. Here we have a string array, for example, for, uh, for visible commandlets. But visible commandlets is not just a string array. It can be just a, a list of strings, but it can also be a hash table that is defined as a string, and then things get quite complex. 
And because things get complex, the, the way how Chris created the, the test function looks like this. This is still pretty straightforward. So here we have the initial um, ensure test, if it is present or absent. And then we go into a function called compare JR configuration, which is customly written to do the job in this, in this scope here. And the function looks like this. So we have uh, references to stuff that is only existing in this particular module. So whatever this guy has done can't be transferred to another module. And this is the same way I have started as well when dealing with stuff that is a little bit more complex and not normal. And um, I think this is still kind of easy to understand, but if we go to the JR session configuration test method, then things get a little bit awkward, right? So here we're starting in line uh, 289 and it goes down to, yeah, here we go, 440, just to compare about 20 or 25 values. Um, so I started to, to fix some issues and to rewrite the code until I realized that things can run better. So when I worked um, with the XDNS server module some, quite some time ago, <clears throat> Um, I was introducing a pattern that was first developed in the SharePoint DSC resource. So the guys creating the SharePoint DSC resource try to find a unified way to compare any state um, of DSC regardless of the technology or regardless of the scope. And uh, this is a pattern that I tried to copy into this resource and it worked quite well and it works even better in this GIA DSC scope. So I think that the GIA DSC scope deals with very complex data. We have uh, PS credential um, objects. We have, uh, of course, in string bool. We have hash tables. We have hash tables and hash tables. We have SIM instances. Um, I think we have the full, almost the full blown options of um, parameters and parameter types. And still this method that I want to introduce to you works um, after I have added a little a bit of changes. So what I am trying to, or what I have implemented in the GRDEC resource is the same pattern, which is just like this. So we have a, a desired state, we have a current state, and if we want to know if um, the desired state or the current state are matching, then we just have to call one single function. And let's do that. And this is it. Right. So if we want to uh, to move oh, this, no. we don't see we don't see what you're showing us. I guess. Why is that? Is it just me or? No, oh. confirm it. Same for me. I okay. think you're sharing an uh, app instead of a desktop. Uh, yeah, fine. sounds like it. Didn't want to do that, but it is screen number two now. Is something coming back? Yeah, Perfect. there we okay. go. That makes more sense. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, sim the pattern is as simple as that. We have a desired state and a current state that we can define. And we have just a one liner to compare these states with each other. So this is not rocket science. And I think a couple of modules came up with the same idea after they realized that having a kind of custom um, comparison, comparing pattern every time is um, makes makes more work than expected and um, is also quite error prone. So if you implement the stuff like this, then actually the set method should be, or the, the test method should be just a single line of code. And if we go to the GIDSC uh, resource and we have a look at the capability, SM1 and the test method, here it is. Um, Due to the complexity of the parameter, so we have to deal with I dictionaries, we have to deal with hash tables and with array of I dictionary and even objects because the commandlet that the resource targets, so the PowerShell commandlet, um, has some parameters that take strings and hash tables. And this is why the developers of these commandlets have gone for system.object array as the base type. And this makes it a little bit more, more difficult. But in theory, it should be as simple as that. You are getting your current state. Um, where is it? Uh, converted. Yeah, you, you are getting your current state, this.get. Um, if you are writing a non-class based resource, it's just the um, get DSC 
resource. Get target resource. Get target resource, function that you're calling, right? And the parameters, when you do a script-based method, a script-based resource is just P is bound parameters, and here in the class-based resource is just this, right? So you're just getting the current state and the parameters um, or the, the desired state. And the only thing you have to do then is calling, oops, calling the compare function test DSC parameter state, um, providing the current and the desired state, and that's it. And then you get your result back and you can, can return it. Let's go a little bit into the details, what this method covers as well. Uh, so this was the most simple thing you can imagine. You have just some, some basic data types and some arrays. Um, we also provide the option to select the properties that you want to compare. In the case you have some, some uh, unrequired properties that you want to exclude, then you can uh, actively select the properties you want to have, Oops, like this one. Um, also, we have the both output that shows what's happening behind the scenes. And we can also take all the properties and exclude some properties from the comparison. And it looks like this. So some little extra functionality. Um, a little bit more interesting, some resources sometimes are dealing with different data types. So in this case, we have a integer here that is stored as a string. And here we have the same um, property, but as an integer. So if you want to compare the actual values and want to turn off the type checking, then it still works, right? So if we are invoking this little code here and doing the comparison, then it returns false. And it does return false because uh, not match, type mismatch um, for integer array element one is a string. And uh, in the design state, it's an integer. So it's actually this one here that we have discovered. And the another value that doesn't match is the integer up here that is an in32 and in the desired state it's an string. So if we don't bother about the types, then we can just turn off the type checking and just focus on the values. Here we go, then it returns true. Next use case would be ordering. So if, if we are not really interested in the ordering of values, um, then we can use the sort array values switch and it it automatically or internally sorts arrays and hash tables. And uh, in this case, even if the order in the desired and current state is not equal, it still returns true, right? There are some cases where ordering is quite important. For example, if you configure a DNS, DNS service, then of course you want the first DNS server really to be the first DNS server and uh, not want to mix them up. So in this case, considering the ordering returns false. What else do we have? Comparing hash tables. I think this is also something that was implemented quite early in these kinds of functions, at these type of functions. And we can compare this kind of stuff, but we can also compare hash tables in hash tables. So it's just an iterative functions that calls itself as soon as, as it finds an array or a list of hash tables, right? So if we do this, and call the script again, it returns true. And if we go with the same one, but turn on the verbose logging, then we see that in the background, it runs over all the individual values and compares them one by one, right? Okay, then sim instances are also covered. Some commandlets or some some internal um, some resources use internally sim instances, and uh, a sim instance in this case is just an um, yeah, an instance of the MFT key value pair class. So it's just like a hash table, um, and we just convert it internally to a hash table for easier comparison. Then we also can compare credentials, but only the username. So we are not um, allowed to read the password usually. So what we do is just make sure that the username is exactly as we expect it to be. Then we have um, something quite interesting. And let me go into the details 
first. Yeah. Um, imagine you have a desired state that contains value one and two, and you have a current state that defines value one, two, three. If you want to compare these values, then, whoops. Go ahead, once again. No, you did not select the right thing. Here we go, it returns true. Um, and I've just tested it with the Active Directory DSC resource. Um, they have added their own way of testing parameter states. And um, the same happens as with this method. So if your current state has more information than the desired state, then it is something that you will not be able to discover. Um, I would name it kind of a negative delta, right? So if you, of course, add something here, like value x contains 5, of course, this would immediately return false because now we have a kind of yeah, positive delta. We have more information in the desired state than is available in the current state. But how do we discover something that is missing in the desired state, active in the current state, and in this case, we want to remove it? And I needed to have this um, when dealing with DNS routines. So maybe someone deleted something um, or it deleted the root hints completely and therefore wanted to remove every DNS server from the root hint list um, in the, on the DNS server. So this would be a negative delta. I have something or I have, I have something being absent in the desired state that is available in the current state and should be removed. And this is why we have added a reverse check that just just flips the current and the desired state and does the check a second time. And in this case, this returns false. And if we run the whole thing, including the verbose, then what we can see is that actually it, uh, yeah, starting the reverse check and then it's flipping the values around. So in this case, we can see that the not matching value is value three that is available in the current state, um, or not available in the current state, and uh, in the desired state is three. <coughs> Sorry, wait, wait, move the mic. Sorry. Yeah, so the reverse check is something that was quite important if you deal with lists that um, may have or may completely be deleted in the desired state and therefore also be deleted in the current state. Does that work when when it's a hash table, for instance, like a nested hash table? Mm, let's try that. You mean we have some hash here containing just a key one equals value one? Okay. Yeah, of course, this would be visible because it's a positive delta. So this works even if we do not use the reverse check. False. And let's use the verbose here. And of course, and let's move this one now instead. to the current state. Instead, instead of value three over there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. Well, you're, you're missing the reverse uh, now, right? Oh, I'm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, here we go. It's a team effort. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so so the reverse check is just, um, as I mentioned, flips this around and help me to 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 kind of fulfill all the requirements in the XDNS server um, DSC resource. I don't think that this is widely needed, but there are definitely some occurrences where it could, could be helpful, especially also in the JI DSC resource, because sometimes, or not or sometimes, quite often you want to remove some permissions or some, some configuration sections from your JI configuration. And of course, this is quite important to get um, to get pushed to the into the to the system and being reflected in the current state. Um, yeah. Can can I just point out it it looks like when you do the reverse check that the verbose wording has not flipped current versus desired. Good point. 
Right. Oh, wait a minute. In this case, yeah. Good point. Yeah. The reverse check. The reverse check is just. Um, let's go. It's a bad name anyway, but I didn't want to say it too early. <laughs> the naming is no, out. I mean, it, I mean, it's just a small net. Yeah. So, so how would you name it? That's a question for the community. What is it? I said that's a question for the community, but uh, we can discuss that later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to do that. And if we have a look into the code, uh, so it's just current is desired and desired is current. Yeah, yeah, it's it's misleading. You're you're definitely right. So at the end, um, the verbose output is not really telling you what's going on. So this is something that I should keep in mind and change that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do we do? We do we also cover script blocks, and this is heavily used in um, the Jira configuration. Um, script blocks are not very easy. Or they are easily translatable into into strings, but you have to keep that in mind in order to being able to compare them. And what else? Yeah, and I've, I'm using the convert to expression function in GIDSC also quite heavily because this is quite helpful if you want to convert dictionaries, hash tables into strings and vice versa. Have you have you seen that that function somewhere? Convert to expression. Okay, very short demo on that. Let's make a new script here and. Uh, let's go for this one here, a bit more complex. And if we store the hash table, or <clears throat> convert to expression, then what we receive is just the text output of the hash table that then can be stored in text files or also in, yeah, in, in MOF files quite easily. So this was a very handy um, function that I didn't write by myself. Um, and so far, it could deal with all the requirements that I had in the JRDEC resource. So very effective. Also, if you have, uh, yeah, just the PS objects works as well. Of course, basic types like strings, bool is, is quite easy to, to convert into an expression. But every time you want to have PowerShell code in a text file or PowerShell data structures in a text file, then convert to expression was really the, the key element here. Yeah, and um, the combination of the test function that I've showed you and convert to expression is in the GRDSC resource. We can do this here in the DNS demo. So th this demo, first of all, creates some, some script file that is not very thrilling. Then it creates a role capability file. So this role capability defi file defines what what this role includes, what somebody who owns or is, who is member of the role is allowed to do. So we have one DNS admin role capability file, one DNS viewer role capability file. And finally, we are creating the endpoint. Um, and we need to make sure that some certain users are getting mapped or getting assigned to the respective roles. And if I hit this demo here, Then we are running into an error. What is it? Ah, yeah, some identities. Right, this is supposed to run in a domain. There is no Contoso on my local machine, so I give this role to myself and this role to everyone. This should work now. Yeah, this resource tends to, to crash because um, creating a new endpoint restarts the, the Windows Remote Management Service. And therefore, we are running into a timeout, but that's not a problem. As we know, DSC continues without uh, doing something wrong. So if we start it again, then this time everything's fine. And the very important thing here was that even if you write the hash table with a different style, but keeping the information, then we do not want the test method to fail. 
So imagine you have this in two separate lines and you run the configuration again. Then still, what is that? This is the GS session configuration DNS endpoint. So it is actually, yeah, this one. Endpoint and we see the DSC finished testing the resource and is skipping the set. So it's still happy even if the hash table is written with different format or maybe even different spacing, doesn't matter. But it still should work as expected. Oops, wrong button. Yeah, so this is, in a nutshell, the test DSC parameter state resource. And uh, of course, I'm always happy to, to extend this and uh, also rename parameters <laughs> if this is more helpful or giving you a better idea about what the, what the feature set of the method is. So as Daniel put into the, so, so that's awesome. So that's good. That means, just to summarize, that means we don't have to write like complex uh, test methods for every resource. We can reuse the same principle to compare the um, what we get and um, on what we expect to get. So, so um, I have you looked at because uh, I'm not too sure about that. But have you looked at uh, dscresource.common and when are you sending a PR to add this function into dscresource.common? Uh, I think it's already there. It's already there. <laughs> I don't I'm think so, so. Not the work that Raymond has been doing recently is there. I believe no, it. Johan, do you, do you know if the reverse check stuff? I think no, I think, no, Dan, no, it doesn't. I think Dan, Dan, uh, Daniel, we, we have worked on the DNS uh, XDNS server resource quite some time ago, and I right. think that the that the, the the code that is now in the DSC resource .common is the stuff that we have put into that XDNS server resource in mm, early 2019 yeah. or late 2018. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's the old one. Yeah, you're right. Um, because the you've the latest ones and I think you you contributed that to networking DSC. So so I think there is we need to update the the DSC resource dot common with the with the latest copy, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I would also great. extend the the test cases because if this is one of the central um, components in the DSC research common module, then we need to make really sure that whatever it compares makes sense and yeah. uh, doesn't miss something here. I think we do. Yeah, I think at the time um, we extended the the test cases to cover a lot more scenarios. So it's they're huge. There's there's a lot of unit tests covering covering the those functions now. So I think, yeah, as, as long as we get the latest version, whatever, wherever that is and use that. So I don't know if, you, if you've if you got a, a good idea of which is the latest version we should copy across. Um, it'd be good to get your input there because <laughs> there, I had the same problem. I've been cop I've been using this this code in every one of the modules and of course they've all got different versions now. So that's always been a tr been trouble, you know, what, keeping it all, all of these up to date. So being yep. able to put them in a single <laughs> module and saying, let's share that is going to save us all, I think, heaps of head headaches. Because this is fantastic. This is every module I've used it in. It's, so, you know, it's reduced the amount of code by so much. So, so it's awesome. So just to take a note for those who don't know yet about dscresource.com, uh, the principle behind this is uh, we create a, a common a, a module you can use. You don't have to, but you can use, which uh, actually implement some functions that you will use across, well, common uh, for every pretty much uh, DSC resource. And one of them is, um, thank you, Raymond, for showing this. So one of them is, uh, for instance, functions around, um, yeah, if you look at source and then the public functions. No, public, yeah. So one is, uh, for instance, to get some uh, the localized data, so that's uh, where the function for localized data and automatically look up based on your current folder or using your default uh, ENUS uh, culture. So uh, this is where we want to add, like you can see this test DSC parameter state here, but this one is an old version, but very soon I hope uh, 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 Raymond is going to update this with uh, the work he's been doing, so then you can just use that module and include it directly into your um, into your DSC resource. And the way to do that has been documented by uh, Johan 
in uh, in the blog post on dscommunity.org and I've put the link into the chat window, uh, which is a use DSC resource common functions in module and it shows you using sampler, so using the uh, the template we have, or how to at build time automatically use this artifact into your code to embed it and use it. And that means you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just use the latest version. You test your code against it. And if a new version has come up, you just update the version. If you have pinned it automatically next time it builds, it will pull the latest version to your build. And that means you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to have to re-implement the same source code in many repos, as, uh, as uh, Daniel was saying. You just say, I'm using this DSU resource command. At build time, please pull it from the gallery. And that's one way of doing it. Thanks. Do you guys have more questions for uh, Raymond? Yes, one more. So uh, can you show how you are now using this in a test method? Sure. So this is done here. So this is the, the I think, one of the most complex resources I've been working on the last year. It's for uh, comparing or creating JS session configurations. So this is um, PowerShell endpoints. And the test method is... Uh, Unfortunately, the outline doesn't work for classes in VS Code. Where is the test method? Here it is. So here we are getting the current state. Um, using the get method, we are getting the, current, the, the desired state, um, which is called parameters here. And it's just uh, whatever the current instance, the class instance knows. And then we are doing the absent present check. And after that, this is just some kind of... Um, of parameter type translation. As I said, unfortunately, DSC cannot, what I, what means unfortunately, DSC can either handle hash tables or string arrays. But uh, the commandlet that we are, Gail is unhappy with that statement, okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll comment later. Um, the commandlet that we are targeting um, takes object arrays and the object arrays um, are or the, the content of the object arrays are either either strings or hash tables and this is why we have to do some kind of translation here but but actually if that translation wouldn't be necessary it is just retrieving the current and the um, desired state two lines of code and then doing the comparison another line of code and return the result which isn't which that so the fourth line isn't required if you do a script-based resource so actually three lines. Yeah. So uh, one thing I can, uh, I was actually working on that today uh, in the, the VMware DSC resource is, is where there they actually have a state where, um, for example, the current state is, uh, well, some class name unset, while the desired state can be nothing then. So um i'm not sure if that's also supported by this but uh, maybe well, which, the desired state can be nothing oh uh, well so indeed the desired state can you can just omit the, the parameter right as in not use it it's not a mandatory one yeah and and then the um the actual value will be something like hey it's unset but maybe uh, I'm thinking about if that's something that is uh, even relevant here. Yes. So if you okay. think about your get, your get will always re like you will, will always provide a key, and then you will always return something. Yeah. And this is what is going to test against, I mean, even if that thing is an it's unset or nothing, but it will always test against something. Are you, are you talking about the situation where 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 you're actually just wanting to not test certain parameters? You've got parameters yeah. in the test, that, and you go, look, I, I they haven't set them in the config. I don't want to test them. I don't want to set them, but you need to do the comparison. Isn't that where you've got the um the values to check uh, array, um, Raymond? Where you can say, look, don't these are the values I actually care about. You mean um, yeah? So properties, don't check any of the others. Uh, properties, properties and exclude properties. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I think those you would use, uh, well, uh, not depending on the user input, right? So of course, in of this course case, of course. The, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so this is hard coded in your test method. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in this case, it would actually be okay. Did the user configure this? Okay, then I want to test it. But otherwise, I don't care. So. <laughs> 
maybe something... bar parameters dot keys or something like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can probably find another ways to to do it. But I see what you mean now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the usual. I think yeah, I've I've got some example code of when uh, some of the resources do that, where where you need to, you don't want to test stuff that hasn't been set or passed in the the properties. I'm sure we've got that, and I'm sure yeah, Raymond, you have have counted for that. Um, I'll see if I can dig it out. Yeah, and and also uh, we when I use it, I usually use uh, PS bound parameters just to uh, not test default values, for example. Uh, but I think yeah. that the function was already returning true if there was a positive delta like that. That's why he had um, the reverse check demo so that you could check for things that were being returned but not set by the user, but by default, I think it was already returning true. Yeah, it, it, yes, I agree. If, if, uh, if there's a state, uh, a current state, that we don't like, I think, yeah. If I understood Raymond correct. I think we will let uh, Daniel and um, and Raymond work on the documentation for test DSC parameters when they finish their PR <laughs> on DSC result of common. Yeah, and, and of course you can always, in the test method or in your test function, you can always um, play with the data and, and bring it to a form that is comparable. Right, so if the function test DSC parameter state does not offer all the the feature set that you require, then it's up to you. Right, what I, what I did here as well. So I get some parameters that might be in a state that are not comparable. So I do the pre work and then I put the rest into DSC uh, test DSC parameter state. So if you have just very simple um, DSC configurations or DSC resources, sorry, um, then just a one-liner should be enough. Um, one call to test DSC parameter state. But if things get more complex, then maybe you need to do some free work to to kind of format your data. And at the same time, you can manage what you get because of your return. You return the compare object, but you can also filter whatever is in your in your compare object. Um, by the way, one thing is the Active Directory DSC um, um, resource also implements its own way of comparing a state. What they do is they do not compare, um, return just true and false. They return if, or they return for each property if it is in the desired state. So would it be also helpful to extend the methods so it returns more complex data instead of just a boolean? Yes, it should not be test. Yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I wanted to say that actually. Um, it should not be a test. It should be a compare, and then based on the compare, you should you should have a if, you, if it returns something, then return false, and if it returns nothing, then return true. Okay. Probably something like this. So um, the yeah, the reason for that is uh, the reason we added that to Active Directory DC is because uh, when you run, for example, with the invoke DC resource, you can run your set. Uh, without actually running test first, then we can use the same function to actually test the state in the set function. Uh, and depending on the result from the hash table that is returned from the compare function, we can test if we should set the value or not. Uh, li like we, and the test uses the same function to return true and false, depending on the values in the hash table. Yeah. So. Ah, so, you're, so you're using the you're using the compare function also in the set method or set function? Uh, yeah, to compare, uh, for example, if to to make sure that we only set the values okay. that actually need changing. That yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to make a change if something is already set correctly because you never know if it's going to fail or not, or at least you want to have some control on it. Okay. Um, and what's what's the better name for reverse check? Any recommendations? When, when you send your pull request, then we will be able to discuss this. <laughs> it will be a better it will be a better place than here because it's good to have ideas, but if we don't see the code, then we're not too sure. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, just for the record, Daniel just sent the link about uh, example in networking DSC. I the think that anyway. That's I think what Daniel. I think that's what Daniel was um, saying, but. Maybe just check. I might have got the wrong wrong idea of what your what the the issue was, but I think that's an example of how how simple it can be. Yeah, exactly.
Oh, yeah, I remember. I, I think you submitted this, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the wind settings, yeah. Yeah, I was not very and happy about that because it was uh, one customer still using winds and creating a DSC resource for something that is often since years is <laughs> was not the nicest job. Yeah. But anyway, now it's covered. Any more questions? No, we good? All right. Uh, thank you, Raymond. That was great. You can't hear everyone, but we're all clapping. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. So, uh, and Gail, just, just for fun, I reached uh, over to Ryan Puffer, who's joined the call. So I went back and looked in GitHub. Uh, he was one of the people who originally worked on GIA DSE that uh, we were talking about in the beginning of the demo um, that uh, Raymond used for the first couple of examples. So uh, just FYI, he has moved over to the management services team from Windows Server. So he'll be uh, a little closer to DSC now and uh, looks forward to working with him. Yeah. yeah, well, you can see his work is being continued and renewed and reworked. It's good. Yeah, this is great to see. <laughs> Sweet. And um, actually, Raymond, just to, to let me know, I believe you haven't pushed, well, it's not been released yet, your changes. Uh, Am I no, correct? I, I've, also, I've also tried to implement your sampler, and I think I need maybe 30 minutes of your help and a little bit of guidance to, to get it done. And then we have this JRDSC module also on the newest uh, state of the art regarding yeah, the general process and the build systems. Sure, and then we can also grab uh, Chris because I know Chris uh, has wanted to work on this as well. Chris Gardner. Of course, yeah. Yep. No worries, you know where to find me anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Just wanted to remind you next time, so in six weeks' time, um, it will be Bartek who's going to tell you everything about uh, implementing DSC resource with PowerShell class and then uh, all the troubles he's found, and I'm really looking forward to that one as well. And if you want to speak, let us know if you have questions. We're always in the Slack channel, so the PowerShell team and the DSC channel, and then we always hang in there, and then we're covering pretty much all time zones anyway. And uh, that's it for today, and thank you, everyone, for joining. If you have any questions, we're still in the chat. See ya. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks, man. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Goodbye. Guys. Thanks, Raymond. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Oh, there's a question here. When? No, no question. Just a statement. Uh, let's, a statement. let's reuse it. <laughs> let's reuse uh, the D test DC permit state when it's in the yeah. series common. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Can you stop the recording? Daniel? Daniel? He left. No, the other Daniel. I oh, left as well. Oh, that's probably going to stop the recording. Yeah, let's the uh, ping in was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too fast. Unless. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Raymond, if you're still here, maybe you can stop the recording. Can you? Let me see. Daniel has started the recording. Do I have any buttons here to control that? Yes, I do. Stop yeah, recording. Yeah, please. Thank you.